Hello, good evening and welcome. Gosh, I feel like I'm doing the 10 o'clock news. It's Miriam Freer, NYO UK, and here we are. It's Monday again, already so soon, so welcome whether you are watching us live or whether you are on catch up later on. Then thanks ever so much for coming along. <coughs> so hello and good evening. And we have come back inside because freezing outside so our jollies of the last two weeks of being outside have disappeared and I'm back in with Emily and Rebecca <coughs> thank you very much thank you very much and they're going to disappear in a little bit but they are just here at the moment so that we can talk a little bit about what we are going to do tonight so Emelina Semelina right here we go so tonight we're going to talk about uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit about masks because in light of what Boris Johnson said today as well about face masks now going to be required um, when we are out in public places where we may be less than two metres apart. Right, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're also going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about cleaning our footwear tonight because actually we've been out... A lot more and there's loads and loads and loads of um, different types of footwear that we have so I just thought tonight we would talk a little bit about protection from the top of our head to the tip of our toes that's what we're going to talk about tonight so I can give that actually I'll put this over here Emily could you just pop that down for me over there on the radiator if possible <coughs> and I thought because I have been chit-chatting all the time hello you lovely people oh damn it's so nice to have you along uh, what I would really like is if first off you could tell me uh, what Enyo you have been using uh, this week or maybe even today and uh, I would love to hear about what you've been up to. Can I just say we have all been uh, doing and practicing our lockdown haircuts which is why the girls are both sporting ponytails tonight. <laughs> Only joking. Right but I must say yesterday after we cut our hair holy moly the floor was covered and this thing if you don't have the floor fibre if you don't have the floor system I should say and this dust fibre is unbelievable about how much it picks up and I'm sure those of you who have pets out there can also uh, guarantee that the floor fibre is amazing at picking up uh, pet hair so whether you have it in this little form here okay or whether you have it as your floor fiber if you are about to practice your lockdown haircut similar to us but right, we have to keep on moving no i'm joking uh then this is a really great one to get in use so what other enyo have you been using oh your outdoor sponge oh absolutely great on the litter tray yes i love that and do you know what we're going to use that as well tonight on our footwear so I'm going to talk about that sponge tonight fantastic for cleaning lit trays though it's really really good isn't it really good <coughs> right now I promised these girls that they didn't have to sit through a whole a half an hour and so we're going to kick off by talking about masks so Emily if you remember we have two types <clears throat> this one which we've been talking about all of the masks are the same price right so you either have two what we call adults but actually this is what Emily is also wearing uh, for 16 pounds or five for 38 and it's exactly the same look I'm so excited that I can show you one of these these are the kids ones right so they're exactly the same they've got that cotton lycra layer inside and then they've got that polyamide on the outside now don't be deceived they're not thin because they're tacky all right they're thin because we want you not to get really really hot and Rebecca is going to show you how effective they are if you are yet to read then we have an excellent blog on our enyo.co.uk page not a Facebook page our main page so have a look at that and it talks all about the use of your masks and how you can utilize them okay but <coughs> we can recommend that these are going to last you 50 washes all right so little kids mask because i tried this one on rebecca let me show you all right so if i pop that on her face she's eight all right 
So can you see that, can you turn around to the side darling? You can see that it's quite gappy. Now I can, uh, I can knot that and it will be quite effective. So Emily, can you just come in and you can show what you've done with yours? All right, so we've put a knot in the side of Emily's. It's not possible just to twist the elastic, it's going to unravel, all right? If you're my mother, then you will have cut it and re-sewn it. Us, we've mostly knotted it, but it's worked very well. All right, so if you pop that one on and you can see that that works really well. I can knot this one for Rebecca and it does get it tight enough, however, all right, <clears throat> let me show this one in. So you'll need to be careful. You need to get the cotton like a bit on the inside. And Rebecca, if you can just come in so everyone can see you, hold it there. Fab, so and can you turn around to the side? So you can see, I'm just gonna tie the tie at the top for Rebecca. It's great. I may let her out in about, I don't know, August. And then if you, is that comfy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so then you can see, I've just tied it around the back of her head, and then if you have a look, it's nice and tight over her face. And I can guarantee the reason why, how are you feeling? Okay, all right, so Emily's is great for her. You know, quite a small, neat head, but we can tighten it just behind the ears. This is really why Rebecca has stayed with us tonight, all right? It's all about the blowing out of the candle, all right? Yes, we are phenomenal hairdressers, Wendy Hartley. <clears throat> right, here we go. Because this is really what the test is about. One, we don't want to overheat, but it's fine if it's thin, as long as it's doing the job. So this is one of the tests that we can have a look at to see that it's doing the job. So you can have a little blow for me. And again, and again. All right, not so much. I, I must say, thank you very much. You can have a little blow. Oh All right, God. so, no, you can't blow it out. You've got a mask on, right. Right, mm. so the candle is out, but this is what's really important, isn't it? That it's, it's actually stopping us sneezing on other people. Uh, Emily said to me tonight, or Rebecca said to me tonight, just before I started, she said, oh, let's have a look at the first Mondays with Miriam. So I uh, logged in and just the bit that I went on to, I was coughing like mad. And uh, Emily and I both went, oh, you couldn't do that now. <laughs> right, so you are right. So I can take that one off you. You are released for good behaviour. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you very much, girlies. All right, so just a little recap about them. Now, I found this quite comfy, right? But I just like the ease of getting in and out of here. Remember, this bit goes over your nose, all right? The top little pointy bit. And if you're a glasses wearer, make sure you put it under the bridge to stop you steaming up. At the moment, we're just waiting for some more of these to arrive back from Austria. So if you do want kids ones, you'll need to hang fire for about a week and then we'll be able to get them out to you. So 50 washes, beautifully small and light. And I'd recommend if you don't and get have one, then just get yourself a little wee laundry bag that you'll be able to pop them in the machine in and that will just keep them right. So that was the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, remember as well that our postage at the moment, if you spend over £75, then our postage is free. So that's like buying two packs of those. So maybe you can club together with your neighbours. But this is what I want to talk to you about because I'm very aware that what we haven't talked much about is the living zone. And I know that we could talk about, uh, well, let me just get it out and we can talk about it in its entirety. So this zone is a hundred and one pounds, all right? The cost of the items is 110. It works out that you are spending 65p a week on average to clean all of your living area. So what do we mean by your living area? We mean everything that is outside of your kitchen and your bathroom. So it's the stuff that I would use to wipe down in bedrooms and the lounge and the dining room and all those sorts of things. Now, I'm not going to look at all of those areas tonight, I'm going to talk about some of the versatility that we can get out of these fibres using it somewhere completely different. Uh, bear in mind, you know that our fibres last about three years on average, but the dust fibre we would say about five. All right, so I'm gonna park those there. You see that I've got some polishing, that belongs to the living as well, and you know that these grey fibres, all right, similar to, well you can see because we have it on our 
<clears throat> outdoor core kit for the moment for £62 running till the end of the month. They're, these belong to the outdoor zone but they're also really handy for some of those grubby jobs. So let me just grab this little box of treats. <clears throat> I've been reading the foot cupboard, the shoe cupboard, I should say, the foot cupboard, for goodness sake. All right, so I have a really grubby pair of Crocs that I go and do gardening in, pair of leather boots. I feel a bit like the generation game tonight. All right, I've got a pair of Michael's boots and I've got a pair of Emily's trainers. And in true Enyo style, we are just going to do one of each, all right? And this is what we always do, obviously, if we come to see you in your own home. So you end up with a nice little patch of cleanness, and then you have to go and clean the rest of it yourself. I know, it's rubbish, isn't it? Uh, oh, yes, the dust, I know, the dust fibre, Kathleen, it's fab that it lasts so long. Right, so lots of a range of footwear, and if you remember, with Enyo, the darker the fibre, the deeper the clean. And it's often these two that people say, oh, I'm not sure what I should be using where, and which one should I utilise, and do I use this, or do I use that? So the first place to have a look is on my Enyo UK with Miriam Freer page. Underneath the photos, there is an album there that says how to use my Enyo. And there's a really little helpful sheet there that you can download. Uh, there's one for every zone, and this will look at all of the fibres in the living zone. So that's a really good place that you can start. Uh, right, so if it's going to be a darker fibre, deeper clean, then when I'm talking about leather, or I'm talking about textiles, then I don't want to use anything that's too aggressive and too assertive, that's going to pull all the moisture out of that. Exactly the same that if you're cleaning your leather suite. So people would say, what would I clean my leather suite with? Well, generally, this fibre. All right. If it's really, really grubby and it's one of those quite uh, firm, hard leather and imagine, for instance, that someone had drawn on with, with a biro, right, then you might need to step up to this glove. But if you use it every day, then it's going to be too strong all right, and it's going to rip all of the oils out. And this one, this fibre here on our textile glove is just the same as the super, super one that is in our in inner core here we go this one our core inside kit at the moment and so i can just grab this and clean i find sometimes that when i'm cleaning shoes and cleaning the girls shoes that it's easier sometimes to have my hand in a glove just to get around so let's start off with michael's boot just the one all right i'll have to do i'll have to have another demo so i can do his other one and this is just about giving that a good clean and wiping off the dirt all right and this is why i like my hand in the glove because it will just help me work away at that and you can already see the difference all right between the two of them i'm sure that you can see that one that's really incredibly dusty and one that isn't all right so i'm going to park those there yep you can see that all right so then let's get on to my boot and again all right it's leather but there's quite a bit of dirt down here as well so i can have a go by starting off with my lovely textile glove all right and i can do that and then if it was really dirty down here around the tread my goodness i look like i have half a garden inside it then i might progress on to use my medium strong glove so you know when it's at winter time and you've been out in your boots and then you get all of those salt marks that come and stain your leather, then I may find that this just isn't, you can see the amount of dirt that's come off there, God, I'm really grubby, um, then that would mean that you would be able to get rid of all those salt stains as well. This will deal with a lot of it, but you may just have to step up a little bit more just to deal with specific areas. Okay, so that's number two, and again, all right, you can see really easily the difference between that and then I'm going to come on and talk about treating it as well, okay, to make it nice and waterproof. So that's number two. I can stay over there. All right, so this is Emily's trainer and I must say this gets a little bit of a hammering, all right? 
which side of the textile glove? Oh, the loopy side, Kathleen. Um, yeah, not the stripy side. You'll feel the stripes in one side, but if you feel the other side, you'll feel that it's got little loops and it's that one, okay? It's similar to the floor fiber that you have, the soft one, all right? So it's the same feel. Um, then on the textile on the shoes, I would do the same. And if there are little grubby marks, I may use this side as well, the stripy side. And if uh, Emily has dropped like something greasy on it, then there's nothing to stop me using a lovely little bit of our washing up liquid. Remember, it's not washing up liquid by any other name, all right? It's not like putting a bit of fairy on. This is a really powerful degreaser, and we're going to be able to remove things without leaving a big blotchy mark. All right, so as I'm doing this, I'd like to know who of you uses Enyo to clean your shoes? Do any of you, or are you still using brushes? All right, and if you are using it on your shoes, what do you use and what do you find that's really effective? All right, so you can see that's come up really nicely, but we've still got, can I get that in a way that's not glary? Maybe about here, actually. Then all around the tread of Emily's shoe, it's really dirty, all right? And so, do you remember I said you were going to talk about some of the outdoor fibres as well? This is where I actually use my outdoor sponge. So this is one that Bev said that she was cleaning her lit tray, well, not her personal lit tray, but her cat's lit tray earlier. All right, so a little bit of marble paste on the sponge, and that is fantastic for just cleaning the treads. So when I was young, we used to have tennis shoes, I remember, and we had that awful whitening stuff. Does anyone else remember that? And you used to spend like the rest half of what felt like your whole summer holiday cleaning your tennis trainers with that whitening stuff that actually just then cracked. All right. Now in true style, I'm only gonna clean one of them so that we can see the difference between it. All right, and where I've got that bit of residue, don't worry. All right, I'm gonna grab my glove again and just give it a go. Leather balm on your walking boots. Ah, oh, Jane, how did that work out for you? Did that work well? Tell me about how that was compared to dubbing that you would have used. So tell me about your walking boots and how that worked for you. That would be great. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the difference here. And I hope you are sometimes the light is not my friend. Okay, let's see if I can, oh yeah, I think you should be able to. Right, so you can see the one that I've not yet cleaned, all right, and you can see the difference in the tread with the one that I had. So how easy was that? All right, so that's just using marble paste. So I do have people who say, oh, could I just use my, I don't know, my kitchen sponge or my bathroom sponge? Yet the fibre is the same, but I don't really fancy doing my pots with the same thing that I would do my uh, shoes with. And this little outdoor sponge is also the one that I would use to do my wood burning stove. And I use it in all sorts of different places. I really like this little one. Okay, so he's quite handy. And you can just see the difference that it makes on trainers. Again, I'm gonna send Emily out with one clean one and one not clean one. Right. So let's talk about my, this is like, the reason I brought this in is because it's like cleaning a pair of wellies. Sadly, my wellies died a death uh, before lockdown. So I don't have any at the moment. And what I'm going to do is talk about how I would probably use actually this cloth that is in our core outdoor kit because it's quite handy for things like this, but I'm just going to use it on my garage fiber. And so here, could I do it with my strong glove? Yeah, I can. Should we have a little go? And I'll show you what it will do. All right, so it will definitely start to lift up the dirt. You can see it in the glove. All right, already that's going to make, here we go, look, a big difference for us. All right, but the it is dirtier, like outside stuff to do with my wellies. Uh, you might use it on riding boots as well. Then... Um, you might find that you're using this one more. I tend to use my outdoor stuff. I don't know, I guess that's partly my head about using these for really grubby outdoor jobs. And the fibre just can really 
get in and clean all of that. Goodness knows, my vegetables won't know what's hit them when I arrive tomorrow with clean ones here. Uh, you're using the, out the, the outdoor sponge is really useful. What are you using it for, Jill? Tell me what you're using yours for. Much better than anything else you've used on your walking boots. Fantastic. I agree. It really applies ever so easily. So I grew up in a family where we went walking all the time. And one of my lasting memories is getting that blooming dubbin into everything that would then seemingly crack. Uh, and so if you can use something that's really pliable and really malleable and feed the leather at the same time and incredibly waterproof, that's what our leather and wood balm does. So that's a great testimony there. Thanks very much. All right. So if we have a little look here, right, you can see the dirt that that's pulled out for me and you can see the difference. All right. So... I think what I'm really saying is that one size of shoe cleaning, all right, does not fit all. It kind of depends on what it is that we're using. So if we're going to do textiles, we definitely, I'll put them the right way around, you can see the clean one, we definitely are going to want to use our textile glove because it's very gentle. The fibres are made to get into the looser weave of a textile. That's exactly why they look like this. OK, and so this one, that's its principal purpose, which is why it makes such an amazing result of this. But because it's so soft, it's not going to be able to clean all of the rim for us, which is why we just need something that's that bit stronger. OK, then we get on to our leather. All right. And we know that, again, we don't want to be overly aggressive with it. But what we do want to do is to be able to clean it effectively. And sometimes there are two parts of that. So I will start with this. And then if it gets really, you know, the bit on the sole and it's got really dirty and, and for an occasional one off, then I would be using my stronger glove. But not all the time because it's going to pull out too many of the oils. Um, suede and fabric walking boots. Rachel, I would use this glove. OK, I would start with that. But we know that if you've been out on Boggy Dartmoor, then then it's likely to be um, much more dirty. And so I would start with this. But if I needed to, I would use this. Uh, and because uh, I guess the leather on our walking boots is also going to be stronger, that I wouldn't progress onto the Enya Tech side, but the medium side and then follow it with your leather and wood bulb so that you're refeeding it instantly which you would be anyway with your walking boots all the time just because of the amount of moisture that there is there but i think you'll be amazed what this also takes off if you haven't cleaned them for i don't know six years like me then you may find that you want to start with this glove just because there will have been a build-up but when you get to the point where they're clean, you'll be amazed what this will take off. But also, because you're going to feed them with your leather and wood balm, then you're going to find that the build-up doesn't come nearly as greatly. So let's look and see what that does. And I want to talk a little bit about our polishing fibres as well. So polishing fibres, lighter colour, much lighter clean, and I tend to sacrifice, you can see that I have two here, I talk about this quite a lot, but I tend to sacrifice one that I use all the time with my leather and wood balm and then I have one that I keep dry for things like jewellery. Right? So if you use leather and wood balm a lot, what it means is then that you don't have to wash it out all the time and you can keep on using the benefit of the leather and wood balm that's still stuck in the fibre. Garden furniture and shower grouting. Ah, oh, yes, that's loads of uses for your outdoor sponge. Brilliant, Jill. Oh, I can't wait to see all of uh, the photos. Jill has the most amazing garden. All right, so I look forward to seeing the photos of that. A really good tip for cleaning brass as well, Jill, is to use this glove and to use calcium dissolver. I know it sounds like a weird mix, 
but you use a little bit, so if you're cleaning silver, you can use this glove and a little bit of marble paste. If you're cleaning brass, you use this glove again and a little bit of calcium dissolver and it'll take all that yellow off. But what you need to do is make sure you take it off again. Uh, it's a citric acid, we don't want to leave that affecting the brass. So if you do clean brass, then uh, this one, but make sure you take it off again. Oh my goodness, I'm jumping weeks. We weren't going to do that yet. Oh my goodness, it's a little extra. Right, so leather and wood balm on the fiber. And this now, I've cleaned the boot, so this is about sealing it and waterproofing it. So if you remember, when we were outside last week, this is exactly what I used on my bench outside. Same process, all right? So it's about me waterproofing and repelling the moisture. Uh, and Rachel, this is exactly what you would use. Um, you may not use it on your suede, on your walking boots because it will change the nature of it. All right, sorry, I was just rereading that. So to clean your fabric and suede, this one, uh, your proofing in that case is probably a spray proof, I would have thought, because if I start to use leather and wood balm on the suede, it would change the nature of it completely. All right, so you wouldn't want to do that. But if you have a look, this is just about proofing and looking after. You should be able to see the difference in those. Holy moly, all right? Now I need to remember to do the other one or you'll see me down the street with one shiny foot and one not. And this is why I don't want, I want to have a different uh, polishing cloth because now I want to carry on and do Michaels, but I know then that some of the leather and wood balm is caught in here. And so I don't want to get rid of that all the time. So I'm just gonna do his boot. Notice the singular, just one Michael. So we'll have to be a family that learns to hop. Uh, calcium dissolver. Yes, you can do it a little bit neat on there, Jill. Uh, and then you just make sure that you rinse it off really thoroughly. Okay. So if we have a look then at the boot there, you can see that I've cleaned for Michael with the leather and the wood bar. And you can see the same for mine. Okay. So that is a, just an amazing way <coughs> of reproofing things. Now, every time that I clean them, I don't necessarily need to reproof them. Uh, that's, that's just about maybe wanting to get the shine back. So this is just the same as you would on your leather suite. You may go and feed it, but then in between feeds, all you want to do is reactivate the shine. So if I go away, I would usually just take, well actually, I would probably just take that with me. And all I would do then in between cleans is just reactivate the shine. I don't need to feed it all the time. I'll probably feed my boots before I went away and then just take something away with me to be able to shine them up. Right, so apply the same principle for your footwear that you would for when you're cleaning your sofa or anything else, okay? Brilliant. So we are now a family of one clean foot, but only one. All right, so there we have our boots, and you can still see Emily's shoe, nice and clean, and the two, if I take them here, I think you can. All right, you can see the two soles and the difference there, and you can definitely see uh, the cleaning and the change there in my gardening boot. All right, so that's where I did find it more effective using my garage glove, but if you don't have one of those, then that's where you utilise what you do have, isn't it? And that's where you may say, well, I haven't got a garage glove, but I have got um, a living glove, medium strong. And so that's what I'm going to start by using. And then at some stage, you know, I may expand, but don't think that you can't do it at all because you haven't got just that thing that you need right now. Have a go with what you have within reason, within the zone that you have. OK, so. I think that's uh, just I wanted to talk a little bit today just about the other uses that we can get out of the things that we have because I think sometimes you go home with this lot and you think well that's great if, uh, if someone's like sick on the carpet I can do something about that and that's great if I need to spot clean my windows and clean down my radiators but it's just fab to be able to just push out a little bit and think about some of the other things we can do. So going forward 
Uh, in fact, Jill has raised it tonight. I'm going to talk about how we use helpers with this glove to clean things like silver and brass. OK, uh, so we'll be able to look at that glove in more detail. And just as the time goes on, then I love to hear what you use this one for as well. Now, this illustrates really well why I um, use the glove and I use as well this living soft cloth. So you can see this is now quite dirty. And over the week, maybe while the girls, um, if we're at school or if we're using this to clean, I don't necessarily wash it every time. I just keep on using it to clean our shoes. But I might still want to go out and damp dust. And that's where this cloth is so useful because this one I tend to use just for a specific function. You know, again, stuff in the carpet or whatever. It often then goes in the wash or I leave it there to clean the boots through the week. So then my damp duster, I still have just to wipe around with. And that's really, I suppose, the difference between using the glove and using the cloth. All right, so hopefully that is clear too. Right, do you know what? It's already been half an hour. I know, I can't believe it either. So things just go so quick. I love meeting up with you on a Monday. I do just want to highlight uh, a couple of things. I have put all this on my page, but just so that you are aware again, all right, we have lots of things on um, the masks on there, and that's just what we talked about tonight. Remember, we still have the high touch kit. That's fantastic if you're out and about. And then if you are thinking that you want to top up on some of your Enyo, maybe you've got some friends that you want to share it with, then all it takes is half an hour in this format. All right, it's really easy, but a little private event for you where we can just talk about any aspect of Enyo that you want to talk about. And the way that we say thank you for organising that with a few friends is we give you shopping vouchers that you can use off your Enyo. So that works really, really well. And in addition, you can get a seasonal host offer. And at the moment, that's our amazing combi wiper. And um, this week I've been out doing some uh, demos on that outside. So if you haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to have a look at my YouTube channel, also by the same name, Enyo UK with Miriam Freer. All of these Mondays are placed on my YouTube channel and all of the zones are there with videos under them that relate to them. So there's one this week that I've put on talking through the window zone, the versatility in that, the difference between the windows and your fill and the living and your fill. So if you're interested in topping up your knowledge, then there is a real resource there as well. OK, and also if you do have a little get together this month, we will also give you a soft skin wipe. So this is the one that I've been talking about uh, when I'm out and about. Great for washing your hands, a really good one sided cloth. My girls just love this and a little um, a little iPad. That's where they're called, Miriam. Six years on, you'd think I would remember that. Right, so an iPad as well. And so if that's of interest for you, just get in touch and we can find a date. Coffee in the morning, right? Afternoon tea with your friends, half an hour in the evening, that's all it takes. And then we can look at that and see if that's a, a way that you can top up some of your Enyo as well. The only other thing I need to say is I have set up um, I always want more Enyo, absolutely Kathleen, I understand that completely. Uh, uh, if you, I have just set up this week a VIP group for clients and I can only invite so far people who I am friends with on Facebook. But if that is something that you would like to be a part of, then please get in touch and I can add you to that group. So if you are interested in that, please, please get in touch and I'll send you the link and you can come and join us. But I think that's it from me today. If you do have any questions in the week, please get in touch. OK, I would love to have a chat with you. Uh, if you've got Enyo in your cupboard that you can't remember, maybe Enyo in your cupboard that your cleaner was using, but you can't remember how to use, please get in touch and I can just answer those questions for you. And I really look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a really great evening. Cheers. Bye bye.